The grass is green, the birds are singing, and for our magazine editors, that can only mean one thing. It's container time. The staff of Fine Gardening has decided to turn their favorite garden task into a friendly competition this year. They will be designing and planting up individual containers, and then allowing you, our discerning viewers, to vote on your favorite. So let's meet the competitors. First up is Associate Editor Carol Collins, a master of all things in the edible garden. Carol can grow a plethora of peppers to perfection. But will this skill translate to container gardening design? We'll have to see. Next up is Executive Art Director Stephanie Fagan, whose unmatched eye for colour will surely give her an advantage over the other competitors. Entering the field of competition next is Editor-at-Large Steve Aitken. Infamous for his dry wit, Steve will likely try to rattle his fellow competitors with his biting sarcasm and sharp commentary. But will this cause enough distraction to allow him to win? Only time will tell. And finally, we have Executive Editor Daniel Sherry, who is the last to arrive on site, to no one's great surprise. Known more for her cheery disposition than her punctuality, Danielle may be in trouble today, since she's largely given up planting containers over the past few years and is woefully out of practice. All right, competitors, welcome to the Great Container Garden Challenge. Before we get started, I'll go over some ground rules. You've each selected a pot ahead of time and have purchased some plants that you feel look good together, as well as some substitute plants as backup. You'll have 20 minutes to complete your design. I'll be coming around to ask you some questions about the plants you've selected. And let's be honest, I'll be trying to distract you so we can uh, get some more interesting footage. Okay, on your marks, get set, plant. Carol jumped out to an energetic start and is already starting to plant. She seems to have chosen mostly perennials. So this is my inspiration plant. This is Wabi Sabi Double File Viburnum. And from what I understand, Wabi Sabi is an aesthetic um, that's all about the beauty in natural processes and imperfection and the passage of time. So my container is a weathered copper wash tub, my Wabi Sabi container. And then to bring a little bit of brightness in, I've got this beautiful Oriola Japanese forest grass. And I love this little Calibracola here. This is, um, what's it called? Holy Smokes. Holy Smokes Calibracola. And that can trail up to two feet. So as the summer goes by, that's gonna keep flowering and sort of spill over the edge. I had this kale, but there just isn't room for it. So I tucked a little Japanese painted fern in the back and that sort of fills in the rest. At a nearby planting station is Stephanie, who seems to have focused on color above all else with her plant choices. Okay, my inspiration for my container is Tropical Flare and I'm going with the recipe that I learned from Steve Silk from long ago from uh, Fine Gardening. So I have a thriller, I have some fillers, and then I have some spillers. So my filler is the coleus, which is gonna get nice and big and fill this space right here. If I keep pinching it back through the season, it's just gonna get bushier and bushier and fill this space. I'm gonna have this nice texture spilling over of the carrots. And then I have the sweet potato vine that's gonna trail down and be that pop of chartreuse that's just gonna add. And for my little bit of bloom here, I have diamond frost snow, which is so good. It's a euphorbia that's just gonna fill that mound. So fingers crossed it's gonna work. The competition thus far has been the picture of decorum and good sportsmanship. Steve. Oh, wait a minute, scratch that. Whoever had the brilliant idea of putting Steve and Danielle in close promise proximity to each other was clearly not in their right mind. Let's see if we can possibly interrupt the trash talking to see what plant Steve has chosen and why. Take them up. Fine, please take them. So I was inspired by a photo uh, in Fine Gardening Magazine by the great container designer Barbara Libner, who had a blue pot and did like this blue-silver combination with a pop of yellow in it. Now the smart person would have gone back and looked at the photo before they attempted to recreate something similar to that. But I'm not that guy. No, I just I just wung it. So what I started out with was I wanted a lavender in here with gray foliage and blue flowers. Couldn't find one, so I got this perennial salvia, a uh, tidal pool salvia uh, for, for a nice shot of, of, of blue here. Uh, and then I balanced it out with uh, Powis Castle Artemisia you know, for a nice frilly 
uh, silver dash to it. And for more silver, I've got a licorice plant here, okay? And that's that's gonna weave and uh, you know wind its way uh, in there. As I was shopping for those these plants, I came across this red uh, red cabbage, which has wonderfully silvery blue to it, and that brings a little bit of red in there. So I've got an extra color working in there. Uh, wonderful accident, um, and I think it works great there. And then for my shot of yellow, I went for this Calabracoa uh, cultivar, and um, a little bit of uh, this is a low-growing uh, Tucrium summer sunshine it's a low grower it's going to spread out um, eventually now i know what you're saying out there you're saying this, this salvia is a perennial it's not going to bloom forever so that's why in front of it i have an annual salvia mealy cup sage uh, which is going to grow up and by the time this is done blooming it's going to be nice and big and have more uh, flowers on it's going to take take over um, and be the star of the show when this starts to fade into the background so crazy like a frog right Oh my. Well, moving right along. Danielle seems unfazed by Steve's jabs and is nearly finished with planting. It appears she's gone with a design best suited for shade. All right, so my container was for partial shade. I really needed a partial shade container and my inspiration was really just this terracotta pot color. Um, I am typically not into peaches or anything in that pastel mode, but I just went with it because I found this really, really beautiful uh, Nemesia, which is a newer variety of Nemesia that was kind of in this sunset orange color. Um, and then off of that, I decided to go with this heuchera over here, which is called Delta Dawn heuchera. Um, since I found myself in the perennial section, I just kept going. And this is Lady in Red Estilby. I live in kind of a wooded location, so I wanted to kind of have like a forest floor kind of effect going on. This was my golden moss, even though Steve tried to steal it and put it on his table. I was looking everywhere for it. So I think he should get minus points for trying to cheat. And then I've got this beautiful fuchsia that's right here, which is gonna spill over to the front of the container and really have those gorgeous kind of magenta-y blossoms that the hummingbirds just go nuts over. Um, in the back here, I've got a red banana. I know it's probably gonna stay smaller because it's in this smaller pot, but that's okay with me, I don't mind and a little bit of Rex begonia because I really wanted to put these white birch branches in my container. All of my containers kind of have the white birch branches going through it. So this Rex begonia right here kind of picks up on that white color. So overall, this is what I've got going on for my container and I think I did a pretty good job even though I uh, basically messed up and dropped all my plants out of the car on my way here. So. Time's up, competitors. Well, looking around, you've uh, all done an excellent job. No disasters or hot messes, as far as I can tell, not even on Steve's part. Carol's done a wonderful job using a unique vessel to inspire her plant choices. That copper vertebrae pot is so interesting, so wabi-sabi. Stephanie's design has some serious tropical flair. Those tall, bold plants are going to be quite the focal point by midsummer. Now, for all his claims of being color challenged, Steve has done a surprisingly good job sticking to a blue, yellow, and silver theme. Well done, Steve. And last but not least, Danielle seems to have found her container groove again, using burgundy and peach hues to highlight that simple terracotta pot. But I thought she hated the color peach. So, who will be the winner? of this year's Great Container Garden Challenge. Well, it's up to you all to decide.